how is it going everybody mr android here welcome back to a brand new video on this channel today i have here with me two of the very popular flagship phones one is the google pixel 10 pro xl which is running the latest android 16 and then we also got the latest and greatest from apple the all new iphone 17 pro max that currently has the ios 26 on one hand, we have the iOS 26, which is going for a more classy, sleek and kind of a sophisticated transparent look with glass-like elements floating on your screen. And then we have got Google, which has a more playful, interactive and aiming to look bolder with brighter colors, funkier elements and bouncier animations, which they are calling it as Material 3 Expressive. Honestly, these two has a very different approach when it comes to the software experience. And since this channel is all about the UI comparison, I thought why not go ahead and compare both these phones and find out how the vanilla Android experience stacks up against Apple's liquid glass iOS 26. Guys, it's gonna be a super exciting video. So make sure you watch it until the very end. Also, let's aim for at least 1000 likes on this one. With that said, drop a like, leave a comment and let's get started. Now before you ask me about the wallpapers that I'm currently using on these phones, well they are from an app called Screencraft. This is an app which I have personally worked on with a friend of mine and a very talented developer. Guys we are constantly working on this together trying to add some really good collection of wallpapers so that you guys can easily find and download these kind of beautiful looking wallpapers on your Android phone. It has just launched on the Play Store and your support would mean a lot to us. So go ahead and give this app a try, you will find a direct link in the description below. Now coming back to the video, first things first, let's start with the lock screen by comparing the clock customization options. On iOS 26, now we can stretch the clock all the way down and not just that, it even dynamically changes the size to perfectly adapt to the space available on your screen when you pull up the notifications, which I think is a nice touch and it feels like you're actually interacting with these elements on your lock screen. Now when you long press and go to customization, here not only can you choose between glass and solid clock style, but you can also select from 6 different clock designs, adjust the thickness, even change the color or create your own by using the color picker option. Then there is obviously the depth effect feature available too that basically puts the clock behind the subject. Comparing all these options with the pixel UI, you might see some limitations here. First of all, we have the same old clock designs from the previous Android 14 version which kind of looks outdated now and also the slider is only available for the default clock to adjust the font weight and width. Unlike the iOS where you can adjust the thickness for every single clock. Even when it comes to the clock color, Pixel UI allows you to choose only from a set of options inspired by the wallpaper Whereas on iOS 26, you can use the custom color picker to choose and apply any color that you want. Now for the size, you are again limited to choose between large and small with no manual adjustment. Guys, let's be honest here. So far it looks like there are certain limitations on pixel UI compared to iOS 26. Moving on to the wallpaper styling options, iOS 26 now has the spatial scene feature that turns your normal wallpaper into a 3D parallax effect and when you combine this with the depth effect clock, you actually get a gorgeous looking lock screen and also that animated album art when you play music on your phone, I think it just looks absolutely stunning. Now coming to Android 16, we got the all new wallpaper studio where you can add different shapes and effects to the wallpaper. By the way, you're gonna love all these beautiful animations they have added all across the interface. Not only can you add different shapes, but you can also change the background color depending on the wallpaper itself. Then we've also got the weather section where you can apply different effects to the wallpaper such as rain, snow, fog and sun. When you unlock your phone, you actually have that live wallpaper effect which looks really really good. Similarly when you apply any shape, the transition from the lock screen to the home screen looks pretty damn cool. I mean they have nailed the wallpaper styling options in Android 16. But overall I would say both have some amazing customization features when it comes to the lock screen. Next let's talk about the home screen. Here both iOS and Android 16 offer themed or tinted icons and widgets with the options to choose between different colors. On iOS 26, you have more flexibility in the colors as you can choose whatever you want or even it lets you pick one directly from the wallpaper by using the color picker. 
unlike Android 16 where you can only choose the colors depending on the current wallpaper which we have applied to our home screen. I also find it interesting how all the icons get adapted to a similar color palette on iOS irrespective of whether a specific app supports color theming or not. Now coming to Android, when you apply the color palette, the theming is system wide which means everything such as quick settings, notifications shade, keyboard, lock screen and even the stock apps adapt to the same material expressive color that just looks way better and perfectly matches the overall aesthetics of the pixel design language. On the other side, when you apply tinted colors, it only gets applied to the icons and widgets. But here comes the best part of iOS 26 and that is the clear icon and widgets which go really well with the liquid glass design. I think this looks pretty elegant and clean especially when you combine it with the right wallpaper. Not just that, it even gives you the option to make the transparent icons light or dark depending on your mood. Additionally, it also allows you to resize the icons and widgets too. If you want to remove the app labels, you can do that on iOS and make everything look a bit bigger on your home screen, which is something you cannot do on Android 16. We do not have the option to resize the app icons or remove the app labels. So there are certain limitations on the pixel UI which might be annoying at times. Now let's open the quick settings or the control center on both phones and here you can see two completely different approaches. On iOS 26, we have got a gorgeous looking transparent control center that beautifully follows the liquid glass design and the nice amount of blur in the background makes everything look clearly visible to the eyes. On Android 16, you can see a slightly different approach where everything looks much bolder with bright colors and funky designs that perfectly complement the Material 3 Expressive. Just like on iOS, you can finally resize the toggles and change the shape of each tile individually to fit in more shortcuts for quicker access. I also like how interactive and playful the whole UI feels. For example, when you tap on any toggle, you get this nice little jiggle effect that also changes the shape from rounded to square. When the toggle is off, it will have kind of a rounded design but when you enable any of these tiles, it changes the shape instantly. Now talking about iOS control center, I still feel it has way more flexibility with different sizes and it lets you completely redesign everything from scratch. You can choose from different shapes, create separate pages for a different set of shortcuts and it just looks more visually pleasing to the eyes with the transparent design and liquid glass effect. Finally, if we talk about animations, I really like how iOS 26 has a very realistic glass effect that is beautifully implemented throughout the UI. For example, when I pull down the notification shade, you can see how the glass effect looks in the background. Not just that, when you switch between different tabs in native apps, it has this water bubble animation that looks super cool. Even when you drag any of these sliders, just look at this glass effect. I think all of these have been thoughtfully implemented and it perfectly follows the liquid glass design. Now coming to Pixel UI, this probably has one of the most interactive animations on any smartphone right now. I mean if you look at some of the animations, it does feel like you are interacting with it. In addition to this, you also get some really good haptics on Pixel phones which makes the whole experience a lot more fun. For example, if I just try to swipe away or dismiss any notification, you can see how the items interact with each other and you get that elastic effect when you try to separate one item from the others. This combined with the strong haptics make the whole experience a lot better. Similarly, when I turn on or off any toggle, it changes the shape from rounded to square. So you get all different kinds of interactive animations throughout the pixel UI which makes it a lot more fun and playful. Apart from that, if you talk about some other animations, dynamic island animations are next level. Just look at how it animates when I expand or collapse the media control. Similarly, the Siri animation also looks very satisfying and visually pleasing to the eyes. Another interesting animation is when you press any of the physical buttons, you can see how the wallpaper is being pushed and it just shows Apple's attention to detail in every single thing. Now coming to app opening and closing animation, this is where Pixel is lagging behind and you can clearly see the difference in terms of smoothness as this is because the Pixel UI doesn't support parallel animations. But apart from that, I actually like how playful and interactive the animations are on Android 16. It may not be as good as iOS 26, but Pixel gives you that fun, playful experience with nice physics and haptics. Overall, I would say both Apple and Google offer very different approaches in terms of software experience. 
one gives you that classy, sleek and elegant look with a transparent liquid glass design while the other has a more playful and bold approach with its design and aesthetics. I think we should give credit to both the manufacturers for trying something new and different with their software. Although it takes time to get used to it, but after a while, I am sure you are gonna appreciate the overall experience you get on both phones. Now if I have to pick one, I would definitely go with Material 3 Expressive over the Liquid Glass iOS 26. I think it is for users who really want to personalize their phones more freely with dynamic color themes, expressive designs and interactive animations. While the iOS 26 is all about aesthetics and give you that sleek, unified look that might feel boring after some time. Let me know in the comment section which UI do you prefer. And if you guys like this video then be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I am Mr. Android and I'll see you guys in the next one.